The holidays are fast approaching, and unless you're well prepared, it can be hard to scramble up a homebrew in time for the next holiday party or get together. That's where today's video is here to help. I have a holiday cider recipe that has notes of mulled wine and cranberry sauce that's perfect for the season. And best of all, it only takes three days total. Yup, three days. I'm Trent Musho, and this is The Brew Show. Let's toss together a super quick holiday cider. Although I'm regularly brewing, it happens that I forget to brew something up for Thanksgiving. Usually I have some festive or fall beer on tap, but right now I find myself in a gap. I need to find something quick that I can whip up. Beer might be a bit tight, plus I don't have any time to squeeze in a long brew day, and wine can take a bit longer to get the right age on it. But cider, now that's not only a super simple brew day, only a few minutes, but also using some brewing technique, I figured I could get this fermented in just a couple days. How you ask? Well, really utilizing two hot trends. Kvike plus pressure fermentation. Kvike yeast can rip through sugars fast, especially at high temperatures with almost no off flavors. And pressure fermenting can further reduce off flavors and also get carbonation into the cider as it ferments, making it ready to drink faster. Don't worry if you don't have a way to pressure ferment, I'll show some alternative methods. So in theory, I should have a drinkable cider in just three days. But before I talk results, let's wind the clock back a few days to show you how this one was made. So since this is a holiday inspired cider, I'm gonna be adding in some quintessential flavors for this time of year. I was actually inspired by commenter Mark Swan, who was looking to make a cranberry orange cider. Thanks Mark. For those flavors, I'll be subbing in one third of the total apple juice for cranberry juice. The funny thing about cranberry juice is that it's actually made up of a portion of apple juice. But that's all right, I'm just looking for some added fruity tartness. In total, I'm making one and a half gallons of cider, but there will be some losses to fermentation, so I'll end up with just a little bit under that amount. Oh, and here's my obligatory, watch out for preservatives in your juices message. Just avoid them for the best results. To start, I'll heat up the cranberry juice in a small kettle, bringing it to just a light simmer. Once heated, I'll add in some spices that are common in mulled wine. The peel and juice of an orange, a couple cinnamon sticks, and a star anise or two. But feel free to customize this to your taste. Just toss it in the pot and let it simmer for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, Pull out the spices and then dump your hot mulled cranberry juice into your pressurized fermenter. I'm using a stainless steel mini keg which can handle near boiling heat. But if you're using a plastic pressurized fermenter or any regular plastic fermenter, let this juice cool first. Then into the fermenter I add in the two other apple juice bottles. They're already chilled so this will help cool the mixture down to a good yeast pitch temp. You could also add the juice into the kettle of the hot cranberry to cool it down too. If you're curious about gravity, most store-bought juices are around 1.050, but if you're the precise type, then I would recommend taking a measurement at this point to see where the blended and slightly heated cran apple juice might come out. Let's talk yeast. I'm using Kvik Voss. According to Lalaman, this Voss strain does well anywhere from 77 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. So as long as your juice is below 105, go ahead and sprinkle it in. About a half packet should be fine, but consult a yeast pitch calc to be sure for your batch. Lastly, I add in some yeast nutrients, my go-to combo, DAP and Fermato. Here I'm just eyeballing it to the package suggested amounts. As I talked about in last week's video, I highly recommend using yeast nutrient with ciders. They reduce all kind of off flavors and help your fermentation get off to a strong start. But if you can only find one of these, then that's okay, but use them if you can get your hands on them. Then just close it up. Time for pressure fermenting. So as this starts fermenting away, the CO2 released will build pressure in the keg. The goal is to regulate the total amount of pressure. Too much and you can start to stress the yeast, leading to many issues including stalled fermentation and off flavors. Getting the right pressure will suppress off flavors and allow you to ferment warmer, which works great for Kvike anyways. So this is where a spunding valve comes into play. This simple device attaches onto the gas post and there's a pressure gauge and a pressure valve that allows you to dial in the pressure. It's super easy to make and I'll leave all the parts in the description for you to make one just like this. Ideally, the pressure should hang around 10 to 12 PSI for the best results, but you definitely want to keep this under 15 PSI. But for now, I pop it on the keg and set it overnight to allow the fermentation magic to happen. The next morning, I woke up to a bit of pressure on the fermenter. Now's a good time to adjust the valve to dial in the pressure. I also decided to add on a heat wrap to keep the temps up and help this ferment even faster. I let it rock for another day. At this point, fermentation should be about wrapped up. 
You can take a small bit of tubing with a picnic tap on one end and a liquid disconnect on the other to pull a sample. The first few pours might be a bit yeasty, but once you get to the cider, you can take the measurement. The CO2 in the cider will throw off the measurement on both a hydrometer and a refractometer, so set it on the counter to help it dissolve out, and then take your reading. And of course, if using a refractometer, use a conversion calculator to get an accurate reading. For me, I got 1.001, nice and dry meaning this cider comes in at about 6.4% ABV. We officially have hard cider. At this point, you're done. If you didn't do pressure fermentation, it might take a day or two more, but really it doesn't take that much longer. But thanks to pressure fermenting, the cider is already carved up. But if you want it even fizzier, you can always add more pressure. The color is a slightly pink hue, and it still has a bit of haze since we're fresh off fermentation. But if you give this a few more days, or even more, I'm sure this would clear up a bit more. The aroma is a swirl of cranberry and cinnamon, with a touch of mulled wine character. The orange comes through just at the end, and when you take a sip, it's immediately a sharp, tart kick of cranberry that then smooths out. The more you sip, and even let this warm up, those mulled spices come to life. It's a perfect contrast to the heavy foods that are often served at holiday parties, so it doesn't weigh you down. But at 6.4%, it keeps you warm, like a nice knit sweater. While it was fun to make this as fast as possible, I do think it benefits from a little more time. On day three, there was a bit of a yeasty character, mainly in the aroma, but it faded after a day or so. And now, almost a week later, those mulled cranberry aromas and flavors are even more distinct, thanks to the yeast getting out of the way. But if you're in a pinch like I was, this is an excellent recipe to whip up, especially if you have some gluten-free friends and family. If you give this recipe a try, or found inspiration for another brew, be sure to let me know. Tag me on Instagram, at The Brew Show. And if you're looking for a way to support the channel, The Brew Show merch store is the best way to contribute and help me to keep making videos like this. I'll leave a link below if you're interested. And lastly, a big thank you to everybody that subscribed. I recently just hit 10,000 subscribers and I couldn't have done it without all of you. And don't worry, I got a big surprise coming for you in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching and have a great holiday season. Cheers.